Are you a spoonie or a chargie? Let's find out. Hey everyone, it's LJ here. Welcome back to another video. Um, so, I did a video previously where I kind of did a bit of a recap because I'd had a long break and I spoke about spoon theory. And I had a number of messages from that video. I've had quite a few contacts uh, from people on Twitch where I talk about spoon theory. And so I thought today that that's what I would do. I would do a bit of a video explaining to you what spoon theory is, where it's from, why I love it, and why I think it is the perfect thing for me to use to explain how I am dealing with life. So <clears throat> I have identified as a spoonie for ages. I learned about spoon theory well before I got ill um, and I kind of half adapted it to my extreme tiredness or what I thought was extreme tiredness <laughs> um, and so I would often use the I'm out of spoons thing to say you know I'm knackered or I can't deal with that or I haven't got the energy then when I became chronically ill with lupus and all the other variety of things I have wrong with me um, I really started identifying with it completely it is the perfect theory for me to explain how and why I'm feeling the way that I am so in order to do this I wanted to give you all the information I needed to check the lady's name because I knew a lady had created this theory um, roughly around the early 2000s that was all I knew about its creation. And so I felt like I should go actually and do some research to um, give over the proper information because you know I want to give this lady credit because she's come up with this amazing theory. So I did a little bit of research. Bear with me, I've just made some notes on my phone. Um, so uh, the lady who created it was called Christine Miserandino. I will write it here because I've probably butchered it. And if I have, I apologise, Christine. <laughs> That's not my intention. I'm just not great with um, words. <laughs> uh, so she created it in... Where is it? 2003, I want to say. 2003? 2003. Yeah, so she created it in 2003 as a way to, um, you know, explain to people, use as a metaphor for um, her chronic illness. What I didn't know and what I learnt more researching was that Christine actually also had lupus. So in fact thun, spoon theory thun theory spoon theory was started by someone with lupus. Um, and it is the perfect metaphor. I've always loved it. It just it's so clear, it makes perfect sense and it's a really visual way as well of explaining to some people why I can't do certain things or why I can some days and not other days and so I really yeah I, I just wanted to thank Christine because I think it is the perfect analogy and um, yeah spoonies unite when we have the energy um, yeah so she um, used it to describe the amount of mental or physical energy a person has for daily activities and tasks which is what I didn't really used to understand because when I first was using it, I was physically tired because of the job I was doing. And I would just be like, I'm so tired, I'm out of spoons. Obviously, once I became chronically ill, I really started to understand the whole mental ability. Because there are some days where you physically feel like you can do stuff, but mentally you're just like, I can't. I really can't. And vice versa. There are days where in my head I'm like, yes, I'm going to go and do this, I'm going to do stuff. And my body's like, nope, not happening. So, yeah, it's a really, it's helped me as well to understand my limits, because I, as I said in my meme video, and I'll link the meme video up there for you, as I said in my meme review video, I know what my limits are, I just tend to ignore them and push them for as long as I can, and then I end up dealing with, you know, a big bunch of fatigue and everything else. So, yeah, it's... It's, it's definitely helping. It hasn't completely stopped me pushing my limits, but it does help me realise that there are a limited amount of things I can do in one day. I can't do what I used to do, and I still hate it. I really do hate it. 
Um, you know, I hate the fact that I can't go to work full time. I hate the fact that I can't do, you know, six things that I want to do in a day. And I'm not saying that people in my position are useless or lazy, but that's what my head is telling me personally, because I used to be able to do it. And it's it's no, never a thing that I would ever say to anybody else, but I willingly say it to myself. And the, 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 the spoon theory, the more I learn about, the more I focus on, the more I really consider spoon theory, um, it really helps and the thing that went along with that that's helping me is I spoke to one of my doctors and they were talking about functional hours which ties in a lot to spoon theory there are 24 hours in a day right the average person sleeps eight hours a day and they have the other 16 where they can be functional for me we have figured out I probably have anywhere from th three to six functional hours a day where I can do things at a steady pace where I can get things done sensibly you know yes I could take all day to clean the bathroom that's not really functional if I spend you know five six hours cleaning one room that's not really a, a functional activity if that makes sense so like when I go to work I'm absolutely fine at work and then I come home and I'm useless because I've used up all my energy in those functional hours and that's fine because that's the whole point of me working the job that I work and the way that I've worked out my hours is so that that works fine. The problem I then have is I'm like, well, I worked on Monday, I did a whole day of work, it should be fine. I should be able to do a whole work day of things on Friday. But it's not that way because I've used up all of my functional hours at the beginning of the week. A, I'm more tired because I've been busy for those three days, which makes sense. And B, as you have functional hours per day, you have functional hours per week. And so if I've done an extra hour of schoolwork or if I've done, you know, if I've been at a meeting or a club or something like that, that can lead into it. And it works really well with spoon theory because it's the same thing. You can borrow for an event, but then you have to pay it back. So, yeah, this will all make sense once I get into spoon theory a little bit more. Let me just give you a little bit more backstory. Um... So she wrote an essay called The Spoon Theory um, and apparently she was taking her medication and her friend asked what it was like to have lupus. She grabbed the spoons from the dinner table, gave her friend a handful of them and then she explained about how we use it. Um, so uh, what it is, is a visual rep representation used as a unit to measure the to quantify the amount of mental and physical energy a person has available to achieve activities of living and productive tasks throughout a given time, e.g. a day or a week. Each activity requires a number of spoons, which will only be replaced as the person recharges through rest. A person who runs out of spoons has no choice but to rest until their spoons are replenished. And that is where I still struggle. Um, that is not to say that... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> that is not to say that rest is certain to give a person more spoons. Many disabled individuals may have sleep difficulties resulting in a continued low supply of energy. Yes, this is me. So even when I go to bed, I don't often sleep very well because of pain, because of various other things. So <clears throat> here is here is a standard spoon theory picture explanation. So it will tell you the um, amount of spoons you have per day. So for this one, um, it says my daily energy supply is represented by spoons. I have 12 spoons to get through the day. Okay. So when I wake up, I am stiff and in pain. This is a slow process, cost me one spoon. Fine. Showering. Sore joints makes this extra difficult, costs two spoons. For me, a shower is usually maybe more like three or four spoons. Um, I have to admit, the majority of showers that I have, I have to lie down afterwards because I am knackered. It's it's weird. Showering seems to take so much more out of me than, say, walking at work. Which baffles me because, obviously, at work I'm doing stuff. I'm, my brain's engaged, my body's engaged, all of this. But I can get through a day of work. But a shower just wipes me out. I don't know if it's the heat from the water. 
if it's yeah, I don't know what it is but showers are exhausting random tangent for you uh, get dressed sore hands <laughs> yep buttons are out of the question yep or like me because my shoulders are still a bit iffy there are certain items of clothing I cannot put on without help so it says getting dressed is another two spoons so so far we've had five spoons out of our 12 that's almost half and all we've done is get up have a shower and get dressed the majority of people will do that in the morning without even thinking about it they just get up they do it they go they get out the door they go to work and they've used maybe what five percent of their daily energy whereas this is almost 50 percent okay having breakfast taking meds on an empty stomach is a bad idea yes so you need to have breakfast although there are some meds i do take on an empty stomach because i have to um my steroids for example i have to take early so that they have time to get in and help my body process so there's a couple of meds that i take very early say an hour or so before i have to get up Dee's brilliant he gets up and helps me take them um <clears throat> so they have time to kick in before i have to be out of bed and it just makes the whole getting up process easier and less painful okay working i have good days and bad days this is a good day it cost me three spoons so that's for the whole work day same theory the showering was two and the whole work day was three be that a half day a full day whatever day whatever hours this person is doing um you know showering does take a lot out keep going on about showers i apologize okay so remaining spoons i have three spoons remaining i will use these three to get home eat change into my pjs keep in mind i can use tomorrow's spoons to do extra but i will have less spoons to get through tomorrow so basically this is just showing you have a finite amount of energy being chronically ill is pretty physically demanding um you know it may look to people like oh you just chill on the sofa all day and watch tv okay when i was working full time and i did that on a sunday it was pleasant because i could just relax and not worry about stuff and just chill now when i'm forced to lie on the sofa all day it's frustrating because i can't do the things that i want to do if it's a work day and I've not made it to work, I feel like I'm letting people down horrendously. If I've cancelled seeing a friend or something because of it, I feel like I've let them down. And it's not just me chilling on the sofa, you know. Lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, surgeons, all of these conditions that I have are autoimmune conditions. So that basically means that my body is constantly attacking itself. So if you think about if you have a cold or the flu or you've had some sort of illness, chicken pox gastroenteritis anything like that where you are exhausted because your body is fighting the disease that's basically what our bodies are doing the entire time they are fighting themselves so my body is like ha you you're a cell i'm going to attack you and then it's like no i'm part of the body mate please don't as i showed in the, uh, the the meme video but it's it's a constant battle and that in itself is physically exhausting and that is in part why we struggle with having the same amount of energy as other people so this theory is a really good way to show how finite it is because once you've used up that energy you're done you know i could get home from work and i could want to go for a run but there's no physical way that i'm capable of doing that and it's not that i'm lazy or i can't be bothered it's literally a physical inability to do any more you know you can borrow a couple of spoons to say after work i was going to meet up with a friend for dinner so rather than just going home and eating like a slice of toast or whatever if i was then going to go out and meet a friend fine i could probably deal with doing that however the next day i'm not going to have all 12 of my spoons so i'm going to have even less energy and this is why people with chronic illness will sometimes plan something for example i'm going to go and see my friends on saturday but then sunday monday i I, i'm not leaving the house i need to stay home i need to rest i need to recuperate um and this is why when i first started considering working part-time i thought the best plan for me would be to do half days so I'd do every morning my consultants had to explain to me that's a really bad idea because that means every single one of those days i'm using up pretty much all of my energy so what i now do is I work two and a half days at the beginning of the week from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 
and then I have four days at home, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, to recover, rest and get some things done. Because as he pointed out, if I worked Monday to Friday mornings, I'd come home, I wouldn't get very much done in those afternoons. You know, I may be able to do a quick vlog. I may mean, be able to make a card one day a week. But then in all likelihood, I would spend all day Saturday and Sunday recovering. So then my entire work week is work. I have no actual life. So by doing all of my hours in those first three days, I then have four days to relax, recover, rest, and do some things that I enjoy. Because, you know, life isn't just work, 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 work. You have to have an actual life as well. And so by doing it in those days, those days are physically exhausting. I come home and I sleep. But by Friday-ish, I'm starting to feel a bit more energetic I've got some more energy I can do things that I enjoy seeing friends crafting doing all these things so it's yeah it's really important to understand where that energy is going to be spent one thing I did want to point out um, there is also another analogy that you can use for this because I know a lot of people struggle spoons is quite an abstract concept for someone but there is the battery analogy, which works in a very similar way. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to find who created this, but I'll have a look and put their name if I can. So here is the battery analogy. It's very similar. It just explains it in a way that a lot more people can understand. Because everyone knows about your battery dying on your phone or, you know, things like that. So here's the battery analogy. My daily energy supply is represented by a faulty battery. Let me explain. I have 50% battery to get through the day. So the reason it's a faulty battery is because I have these chronic conditions. So my body is constantly fighting itself. There's pain, there's fatigue to deal with, there's different uh, problems where maybe certain parts of your body don't work as well as others. So for me, my shoulders are still a bit of an issue. My hip is obviously an issue. Um, and the sleep isn't the greatest quality. So we run on a 50% battery. Okay, and then it's explained in the same same way. So waking up, when I'm stiff and in pain, this is a slow process. Battery left, 45%. Showering, some joints make this extra difficult. Sore joints. Sore. Sore joints make this extra difficult. Battery left, 40%. Getting dressed, sore hands, buttons are out of the question. Battery left, 35%. Breakfast. Uh, taking meds on limp stomach is a bad idea. Battery left 30%. So now for the rest of the day, we have 30% of a full battery left. 30% battery. So housework or going to work has good days and bad days. On a good day, that takes up 20% of our battery. It's a lot of it. So we are left with 10% for the rest of the day. So then explained in the same way. I will use this 10% to run errands, eat, change into my PJs. Keep in mind I can use tomorrow's battery life, but then my battery will be charged even less tomorrow. And that works really well with the whole recharge idea because, you know, you plug in to recharge your phone, you sleep to recharge your body, but ours doesn't recharge to 100%. So, um, people who use the battery analogy call themselves chargies or unchargeables. Um, and, yeah, it's just a way to consider a different way to, to the spoon theory um, and it says do, 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 uh, the idea that your battery is low comes more naturally than spoons in this person's opinion um, although people calling this don't have a battery um, they often don't recharge however long they rest for so you could sleep for like 12 14 hours and not be rested if your battery is broken if it cannot charge so they feel that this is more of a understandable, recognisable analogy than spoons. I just like spoons. I think it is better for me. But there is a huge unchargeables community, so rather than the spoony community, founded by Natalie Van Schl Scheltinger. 
I have probably pronounced that really wrong. It's here. I apologise, Natalie. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> I'm not good with words. Um, yeah, so it, she then asked the question, are you an unchargeable or a spoonie? I've always identified with the battery analogy because of mobile phones. Um, the idea that my battery is running on empty is understandable to most people. She says, however, the spoon theory does have its practical advantage. Um, it helps people to understand when you can explain this is an energy deficit to them. They can physically see the spoons being taken away from them. Although you could really use anything instead of spoons. Yeah. So if you're on a beach and you find yourself trying to explain it, use seashells or pebbles. Um, use medication, use your socks if you're in bed, things like that. So they are... They say that the spoon theory is a great way to physically show someone but that the battery analogy is kind of a bit more recognisable instantly to some people. So yeah, whichever one you feel is, is best for you. So there are two ways that you can really kind of hopefully understand a bit more about why people with chronic illness can struggle. Um, you know, my consultants suggest that I schedule in maybe two things a week um, because of work. I have work for those three days and he suggests that over those four days scheduling two things that you want to do and leave the rest of the time to rest, relax, recharge, recuperate and that's where I struggle because I'm like no I want to do more than that so I do more than that and then I really struggle um, <clears throat> so I'm still trying to learn I am not perfect yet I'm not not fully aware of how far I can borrow. I tend to borrow quite a lot and then the next day is a complete write-off. So it's it's a really fine balancing game. But I'm hoping that using the, the spoon theory and the battery analogy has kind of helped explain a bit to you guys why we call ourselves spoonies, why we identify with the spoon theory. Not all people with chronic illness do. Um, some really don't like the analogy some do, I really do, I think it's a perfect analogy, I really enjoy the way it explains things so clearly and it is a really simple way to say to somebody I'm out of spoons, I can't do this, I'm too tired oh come on you've got, you can do it you can do it <clears throat> I'm out of spoons, they're like fair enough because it is you know and people have seen <clears throat> in my life days where I push it too far and then I'm literally like I can't physically get out of bed the next day I'm in so much pain I'm so tired so yeah I mean one of the classic examples of this was we went to a wedding and I was doing my best to conserve as much energy as possible but it's a wedding everyone's drinking and dancing and having fun and I wasn't drinking because of my meds but I was dancing and having fun so I wanted to join in so I was dancing around I was having a great time I was drinking coke so I was giving myself some sugar and some energy and I was having a great time and then the next morning we had to get up and leave the hotel by checkout time and I was physically unable to do that so we actually just had to book the room for an extra day thankfully the room was still available to book for the following day because I physically could not get out of bed that morning I was in so much pain I was so tired and the problem that I then have is that I berate myself about it. Because, oh, you shouldn't have done that, it's your own fault, blah, 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 which makes it worse. Because then you feel bad as well as feeling bad. Um, so, yeah, Spoon Theory is really helping me to try and identify my own limits as well. So, yeah. Hopefully that has explained a few things to you. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Just say hi, I love chatting to you anyway. Um, I really am enjoying meeting some more spoonies and non-spoonies alike here on youtube it's really really a lovely lovely community that we've got so far and i love you all um if you are interested in any of the other things that i do in my life that aren't chronic illness related i do make a lot of crafts i do resin and i work with paper and um crafting is kind of like my therapy it, it makes me feel good it makes me feel productive it's also my physical therapy because there are certain actions that I have to do, especially with the 
paper crafting that move my hands in a way that are very, very similar to my physiotherapy activities. So, yeah, it is both my mental and physical therapy. If you are interested in seeing that, the link to my craft channel will be down below, um, as will the link to Twitch. I do do my streams on the weekend. Because I can't leave the house at the moment, we're still in lockdown. All of my energy is going into streaming, and it's been really nice doing stuff live and chatting with people and yeah it's been great fun so yeah if you want to know more about me and my life i'll also put my my um personal instagram down below um, and you can catch me there and i'll see you in the next video loopy love bye